Welcome to this program, which is part of the Our Finger Lakes History series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable. This program deals with where were the falls in Seneca Falls. Like many Seneca Falls residents, I occasionally am asked, where are the falls here in Seneca Falls? After all, the name of the place is Seneca Falls. The reality is that there were man-made falls in Seneca Falls up until 1915 when the canal was redone in Seneca Falls and the water level was raised so much in the process that since August 1915 there have been no man-made falls here in Seneca Falls. If you look at the close-up of this map at the bottom of the slide you will note that the average lake level of Seneca Lake is 446 feet above sea level, while that of Cayuga Lake is only 383 feet. That means in the span of the approximately eight miles the Seneca River connecting Seneca Lake with Cayuga Lake, in that Seneca River of approximately eight miles, there is a drop in elevation of 63 feet. Approximately 49 feet of that 60 feet, 63 feet drop takes place in the one mile span of the Seneca River in what was the village of Seneca Falls. That 49 feet drop was actually a series of rapids rather than actual natural waterfalls as we commonly think of waterfalls. The Iroquois called these rivers Sashionsi which means swift rolling waters. So one could argue that there never have been waterfalls as a natural phenomenon in Seneca Falls, just rapids. But we, do, we did have three man-made waterfalls starting in the early 1800s because businessmen realized that they could easily build dams to harness the rapids to be used as water power for various mills and other industries operating in Seneca Falls. Two factors, these man-made waterfalls for water power and the construction of locks so that boats could more easily get around the rapids, those two factors help to explain the exponential economic growth of the village of Seneca Falls in the first decades of the 19th century. This map shows the location of those three man-made waterfalls. They are simply named the Upper, Middle, and Lower Falls. This map also shows an area shaded in blue that has been underwater since August 20th, 1915, because of the new con canal constructed by the state of New York. This slide shows the first lock in Seneca Falls. It was completed in 1815. I hope you can realize how much better it would have been for boats to use this lock rather than try to navigate through the rapids. All of the locks on the Seneca River, there were at Waterloo, at Kingdom, and Seneca Falls. All of those locks were completed in 1822. That new canal on the Seneca River led to great economic growth in Seneca Falls and Waterloo. In 1828, this canal on the Seneca River was taken over by the state and connected with the Erie Canal, leading to a still bigger economic boom for both Seneca Falls and Waterloo and areas along Seneca Lake. This is a postcard picture of the Upper Falls, which was located near the canal lock shown in the previous slide. On the right, you can see a mill which made use of water power from the Upper Falls. In this picture, you can see both the Upper Falls and the Middle Falls. You can also see buildings which housed industries making use of the water power from these falls. This is an 1873 aerial view of the Seneca River and Canal in Seneca Falls. 
You will note the location of the upper falls and the middle falls. You will also note that there are islands in the Seneca River, islands that became known as the Flats. On the Flats were located many industries making use of the water power from the man-made waterfalls and making use of the canal locks. In the bottom part of this postcard, you can see the water backed up by the dam that made the upper falls. The main course of the river is to the left, while the canal course is to the right. You will note that there is an industrial building right in the center. It is located on the westernmost island of the flats. This is an 1876 drawing of the various industries located near the upper and middle falls. In the very center, you will see a man walking the very narrow footbridge connecting that portion of the flats with the north side of the river. And that's how many of the workers got to the industries on the islands of the flats. Further east on the Seneca River, we have this portion of the flats. You will note that I am really talking about the area east of the Ovid Street Bridge. That area east of the Ovid Street Bridge in the previous slide is what is today Van Cleef Lake. But prior to August 1915, it consisted of a residential area that you can see on this map shaded in blue, as well as some island industries. All of the area shaded in this map was flooded out by the new canal locks starting in August 1915. This is a circa 1860 view of the Upper Falls and the industries located east of that waterfalls. The river once again is to the left of the cowing business, the canal course to the right. This is an 1894 view looking west from the Ovid Street Bridge. You are only seeing the canal portion because the Seneca River course itself is hidden from the buildings shown to the right of the canal locks. You will note how crowded the various industries are on the banks of the river, as well as uh, the Flats Island. I am showing this frame again so that you can once again see what the area east of the Ovid Street Bridge looked like in June 1914, approximately two months prior to the flooding for the new canal locks being built inside the village of Seneca Falls. The Dye Street area was the residential area. I have also drawn red arrows to point out the islands of the flats. It was on these islands that the many industries in Seneca Falls had been located to make use of the water power generated from the waterfalls. The coming of the railroad through Seneca Falls starting in 1841 became major competition for the Cuga Seneca Canal and the entire Erie Canal system. So in, 18, in 1909, the state of New York started to make major improvements to the Cuga Seneca Canal, such as making longer and wider locks in the hopes that commercial business on the canal would continue to be profitable. Where there had been approximately eight locks on the Cuga Seneca Canal between Seneca and Cuga Lake previously, with these new canal improvements, there would only be four locks, but each would be bigger. In this picture, you can see canal walls being reconstructed approximately where the upper and middle falls had previously been. In this picture of the canal construction of the walls, you can see the rubble of what had been several industrial buildings on the flats. These building materials that were not salvaged were simply broken up into rubble that would help provide some of the fill needed for this new canal. Some big industries, such as Gould's Pumps, relocated to other places in the village of Seneca Falls. 
About where the lower falls had been located, two new locks were being constructed. Canal traffic would go directly from one lock into the other lock. Combined, these two locks made up the approximately 49 feet change in elevation of the Seneca River in its course through the village of Seneca Falls. These two locks were going to need a large water supply, so the water level throughout the village was going to be raised so much that all the islands of the flats were going to be flooded out, no longer existing. The actual flooding of the flats was completed on August 20, 1915. Gone were the three man-made falls in Seneca Falls. This circa 1990 aerial view shows these two adjacent locks and how the water level of the new canal system has been raised so much starting in August 20th, 1915, that all the area of the flats had been flooded out. That wide portion shown in the, to the right of the locks in this picture became known as Van Cleef Lake. The falls in Seneca Falls were gone as of August 20th, 1915. Gone because of the reconstruction of the canal through the village of Seneca Falls. But as a result, we ended up with a beautiful Van Cleef Lake. A picture of Van Cleef Lake is a very popular tourist photo site. Thanks for joining me today for this program, which is part of our Finger Lakes history.